Hello and welcome back to Becca's Book Nook. Today I have my Chain of Iron review. I did finish this book a couple days ago but wanted to give myself some time to reflect on what I read and to gather my thoughts before sitting down and talking to you guys about it. So now that I have given myself some time, I'm finally ready and have conducted all my thoughts and I'm very excited for this review today. This video will contain spoilers for Chain of Iron and potentially Chain of Gold, so if you haven't read either of those books then maybe don't watch this video and go read them first and then you can come back. For those of you that are unaware, this is Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare and it is book two in her The Last Hours trilogy and it is set in the early 1900s and follows the journeys of the descendants of Will Herndale, Tessa Gray, and all the characters we met in the Infernal Devices trilogy. This book was phenomenal. I cannot stress that enough. I have genuinely not stopped thinking about it since I finished. I personally liked this book even better than Chain of Gold, so I can't wait to see what she has in store for Chain of Thorns. All right, so without further ado, I'm just gonna jump right into the video. So starting off right from the beginning, it has been four months since Chain of Gold took place, and there are preparations happening for James and Cordelia's little fake wedding that's gonna happen. Um, I kind of forgot that not everyone knows that the wedding is fake, like um, Will and Tessa think that it's very much real, and I also didn't really think about the fact that they'd be moving away to a house of their own, so I was really impressed and it was adorable that James set everything up in the house to, in according to Cordelia's taste, and he put lots of um, memorabilia and such from her background, which I found really adorable and you can tell that he's in love with her right from the beginning but she's like he could never love me like sis he does for nearly two-thirds of the book the only thing on my mind was can someone get this goddamn bracelet off of james's wrist it was so nice to be back with the merry thieves i love every single one of these characters and it was so nice to get to see a little bit more from Christopher and Thomas in this book than we did in the last one because I feel like I got to know their characters a lot better and I'm excited to get to learn more about them, especially the budding relationship we have happening between Grace and Christopher, perhaps. Um, I'm thinking there's going to be one. And of course, the Thomas and Alistair drama. I was literally blown away when Alistair admitted to following Thomas around and knew that he was not the murderer. I couldn't believe that he admitted that and then of course they had their little romantic moment in the sanctuary which was really great and I'm happy that happened and that Thomas and Alistair both can be 100% totally themselves now and I loved the revelation and them coming together and yeah I can't wait to see more from them although they ended the book off with Alistair walking away from him and saying that they shouldn't be together so um really no one ended off in this book happy to be honest except for maybe Matthew. Talking about Matthew I was thrilled when he told Cordelia the truth about his dark past and having killed his mother's unborn child and because I knew that was plaguing him for so long and I was very happy that he finally got it off his chest although I do wish that he could have told James um, because his feelings for Cordelia I feel are really dangerous and I'm worried that they're off to Paris together now and I have this feeling that something's gonna happen, they're gonna hook up and I feel like James might either walk in on it or right after they hook up, James is going to tell Cordelia the truth about what really happened between him and Grace. Matthew's drinking is also getting slightly concerning and I'm really glad that it was acknowledged in the book by the Merry Thieves um, as well as Cordelia a lot. She noticed a lot of similarities between Matthew and her father and I'm very happy that she told him no drinking in Paris so I'd like to see the change in his personality um, that comes from him not drinking because he's literally always sipping from his flask so I'm very fascinated to see the difference in how he's going to act while they're in Paris. I also would not be surprised though if his no alcohol rule does not make it all the way through Paris because if I'm correct and James shows up there I have a feeling that he's gonna drink if him and Cordelia had done something and then his feelings just have to go push back down. I would like to shift my attention over to Grace a little bit more because 
we got to just learn so much more about her past in this book and I found it really interesting seeing the little chapters Cassie put in strictly about her growing up and feeling really lonely in the house especially once Jessie had died and I found myself feeling really terrible for her especially getting to see some more of the way that her mother treated her growing up and her finding out more about Jesse's past and especially finding out that he his body was the killer and possessed by Belial. It's just really great and kind of emotional to get to see her backstory and to hear that she didn't ever really want to use her power on James but she was being forced to made me feel quite a bit of sympathy towards her and maybe even dislike her a little bit less than I had going into the book. In reality, Tatiana is the main person behind everything going on, but in Chain of Gold, we were just sort of trained to dislike Grace because she had this witchy sort of hold over James and his emotions, and she was taking him away from Cordelia, who we could clearly see he was in love with. Um, but in this book, we got to see a little bit more about how much she hated using her power on James and actually went to him in the end to tell him the truth and explained everything um, but unfortunately that did lead to Cordelia misinterpreting the situation and running off which was obviously not great. I found the scene with her and Christopher in the lab really interesting because I wouldn't have expected her to click that much with Christopher, especially with all the science-y stuff that they were doing, but she seemed very fascinated by everything he was doing, and he was so happy to finally have someone to talk to who like appreciated all of his opinions, so I found that really cute, and especially where she didn't even think to use her powers on him, I really enjoyed that, and I hope to see a little bit more of that um, friendship emerge and potentially a romance, who knows? Um, but yeah, I guess we'll find out in the next book some more. Also, let me just say that Cassie's dedication at the beginning of the book is so misleading. I thought Philomena D'Angelo was going to be such a big part of the story, maybe even like a love interest for one of the Mary Thieves or another character that we knew, but she was one of the first people to die in the book, and I just really was expecting her to have a bigger portion, but I guess she was just there for some extra characters or something, but... Yeah, I was very underwhelmed by the inclusion of her. Shifting my attention to Lucy now because she had such a major part in this book and she is going to be in serious trouble in the next one, I already know. It was truthfully really painful to read her chapters talking about her feelings for Jesse and how she was falling in love with him and every moment they spent together just kind of hurt me because I really thought that he wasn't going to be around for much longer, but she's crazy powerful, like more powerful than anyone was aware of. She literally brought Jesse back to life. I was blown away when that happened and I can't wait to see more of what happened and maybe them to explain how that's possible. Um, but I, a part of me feels like Jesse's not going to stay alive. I'm a little bit worried that she's going to be so happy that he's real and actually in the flesh and they can be together but then he's going to disappear and leave her alone again and I'm really not prepared for Lucy's pain if that does happen. To be honest a lot of this book was painful to read for me which is probably why I loved it so much. I love being so emotionally attached to characters in the story but Anna and Ariadne's romance just literally broke my heart so many separate times. They're both clearly still so in love with each other, but Anna has too much pride to go back to her after Ariadne hurt her so badly, and Ariadne is just doing everything she can to apologize and try and win her affection back, um, but it's like constantly being pushed away, and the only thing they have together is this sort of sexual relationship when you can tell that deep down both of them want the romantic relationship that they used to have, but Anna is too wounded, her pride is too hurt, that she does not see a point where she'll be able to take Ariadne back without harming herself. Um, and yeah, it was really, really hard for me to read, especially the ending where Ariadne kind of just told Anna she didn't deserve this and she was done and she, she didn't get to see Anna crying on the step, but we did, and it was just really hard to read. I also did enjoy finding out a little bit more of Thomas's sister Eugenia's past, 
and her um, saving the boy that hurt her so badly, um, kind of showing him that she was still strong and had come back from everything he did to her. And that was just a really fascinating little inclusion that Cassie did. Lucy and Grace's friendship throughout this entire book was stressing me out. I knew Cordelia was going to have a fit when she found out how close they were. Lucy wasn't telling anyone her plans. She was being so secretive and so suspicious and I was just so worried the whole time that something really bad was gonna happen because of all the dark things they're mixing themselves up into and them just every time they were together I just got really worried that something really awful was gonna happen. I didn't find myself getting upset about the death of Elias because Cordelia and Alistair almost didn't seem that upset. Like I know on the inside they were probably sad but I didn't find myself being as emotionally attached to him obviously because he was kind of a jerk throughout the whole book um, but it was kind of weird for me to see so many deaths in the book that I didn't really feel that connected to even when Charles was about to die I really just hadn't connected with him because they were all sort of people we didn't know or people that we didn't have a great connotation with so that was a really interesting element to this book in my opinion the James and Cordelia scenes in this book were hot the scene where he is tied to the bed the scene where they're in the study and the bracelet finally breaks I was literally screaming they were so well written, so great. You can see their love for each other. But then it's just so hard because Cordelia is genuinely in love with James and James has no clue. And James is genuinely in love with Cordelia, but he has no clue because of the stupid charm on him. And Cordelia just thinks that their whole marriage is still a sham when in reality, they both love each other. And if they just communicated, everything would be fine. A part of me did fear that James was the killer, but I was never that upset about it because I knew that if he was, it was just Belial controlling him the whole time. But I did have a feeling that it was sort of like a Harry Potter kind of thing, like in Order of the Phoenix, when Harry was the snake in his dream, thought that it was like he maybe did it and James felt the same way. But um, I was never actually genuinely worried that it was him committing the crime. When Magnus came to help James sort of use dream magic, it really confused me because they described his magic as a different color than it normally is. It wasn't blue like his magic normally is. It was, I think, gold or bronze or something like that. I was very confused and I remember thinking in my head like, oh, that's weird, his magic's different, but didn't think about it much more to realize that maybe he was being possessed or someone was dis um, disguising themselves as him. I just had that thought run through my head and then realized at the end that I clearly should have thought about it a little bit more. I also found it super fascinating that we got to see Malcolm fade in this book and see a little bit more of his past and it was interesting to see him not as a villain and just see him as the high warlock and actually helping the kids and we also got to see him find out that Annabelle was actually dead which was really sad but it was really great to read this book after um, I just finished reading the Dark Artifices books because going backwards in time and seeing that reaction and seeing him find it out and to see his brain sort of working and deciding how in love with this woman he still was and how if Lucy can bring back Jesse from the dead, maybe it wouldn't be such a bad idea if I could bring Annabelle back from the dead. And I'm sure we will hear a little bit more about that in the next book since Malcolm and Lucy have run off with Jesse, who is now alive, to Idris. And it'll be interesting to see what's going on when they find her or if they find her. The plot twist where Lilith was behind everything and um, Cordelia is now her paladin blew my mind. It was the last thing I was expecting. And when she showed up, I was like, of course this bitch comes back to ruin everything like she did in the Mortal Instruments. Cordelia's heartbreak when she found out that she wasn't Waylon the Smith's Palatin and she was actually Lilith's was terrible to read. I have no clue where she put Cortana, what she did with it. Did she give it to Alistair so that he could use it? Is she gonna be using a different weapon now? Is she even going to be able to train without the fear that Lilith is going to control her blade and force her to do something that she doesn't want to do? 
I have so many questions about that. I can't wait for them all to be answered. And I can't believe I have to wait a year for them all to be answered. It is a very interesting addition to the story now that James knows that Matthew's in love with Cordelia because it makes me worry a little bit that he is going to push his feelings aside for her and let Matthew have her, which really just feels like we're back in the infernal devices with the whole Will is James, Jem is Matthew, and Tess is Cordelia, and that really worries me because I'm wondering if one of them's gonna die or if one of them is just gonna be in absolute heartache for the remainder of the last book because they don't get to be with Cordelia and that really worries me. I also genuinely have no clue which one of these boys she's gonna end up with or if she ends up with someone else. I've never looked at like the family tree that was apparently in Clockwork Princess and I have no intention of looking it up because I don't want to spoil myself. But um, yeah, I genuinely have no idea what's gonna happen and I'm a little bit worried at what we're stepping into, what these boys have gotten themselves into and the whole Paris situation just really worries me. It really worries me that James is not immediately following them and I'm just very scared to see what's gonna happen. It was also cool to see some of the new things in this book that we haven't seen before. For example, the instrument that could take a Shadowhunter's runes just by drawing over it and then draw it onto someone else. That was really, really cool to me and I found it really cool that Grace was the one to help Christopher figure it out, especially because it was her own brother who had the runes. So maybe if she had just checked her brother's body, she could have figured it out. But of course, Lucy figured it out. Um, and I really enjoyed seeing some of Leviathan's power because we haven't really seen um, many of the Princes of Hell, so it's always really cool to get to see some of their elements in there, and it makes me curious as to if um, Leviathan is going to be making an appearance throughout the rest of the series, or maybe we'll get to see a different Prince of Hell's power. I don't know, maybe Magnus's dad will come back. Who knows? So overall, as you can tell, I really, really enjoyed this book. It's very high up on my Shadowhunters book list, which I will be doing in a video very soon, my Shadowhunter ranking list, um, since I just reread the entire Chronicles. Um, but yeah, so this book was crazy good. I encourage everyone to read it. I rate it a nine out of 10 stars just because it lost that one star for the horrendous ending that I had to suffer and cry through. Also, a theme through my videos is that I do rank my books out of 10 stars. I feel like five stars just isn't enough for me and it kind of stresses me out trying to figure out where on the scale a book belongs. I feel like books just have such a larger scale of elements that make up a good one and I want to have the opportunity to rank it out of a bigger, on a bigger scale than just five stars. So I always rank my books out of 10 stars and Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare gets 9 out of 10 stars from me. It was beautiful. I encourage everyone to read it, but obviously I would recommend reading The Infernal Devices and Chain of Gold, obviously, before you read this one. I suppose it's not necessary to read The Infernal Devices, but I would definitely recommend it because you'll know the characters more, and it just gives you a better sort of understanding of what's happening, and it won't be the same reading these books without knowing who Will and Tessa and Jem are, because literally every single time they showed Will, I cried. Like, it makes me so emotional. He's genuinely one of my favorite male literary characters of all time. So definitely read that before you read this one. If you enjoyed this book, please comment down below your favorite part or anything else that you liked about it. I would love to hear also any theories that you may have for the next book. Also, let me know what your favorite new budding romance is. Do you like Anna and Ariadne? Do you like Thomas and Alistair, Grace and Christopher, Matthew and Cordelia? You'll have to let me know because I cannot wait to hear your opinions. So that is the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. I will link some of my socials down below if you want to follow me there, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!